How deluded you are, Tableau 7. You think you can stop me with your exploding pen? I have created a global disaster 70 years in the making. I'm just surprised you didn't see it coming. I left so many clues, even that irritating Swedish teen could see the signs. But your governments have turned a blind eye. Each time they set a target on me, they miss. The oceans will rise, the crops will die, and there's nothing you can do, James. Oh, by the way, who do you think bought up all the fresh water? Can you guess the name of my shell company? I'll give you a hint. The world might soon find itself in a bit of a Nestle's crunch. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy the next 10 to 20 years, Mr. Bond. That was dark. Really this dark. is always my favorite section of the show when, when Gavin does these He's little, I know. These so little skits that he it's does. It's like private like really things. Wonderful. We only get to see it. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe you'll be able to see it. Sometimes we're putting these up on YouTube. Who knows? Who knows? This one will make it. Uh, right, panel, there is your news clue. This week, the British Prime Minister gave the opening speech at the Global Climate Conference. The Sun newspaper headline was, Boris Johnson warns world leaders climate crisis is like a James Bond movie. How is the climate crisis like a James Bond movie? Climate change is like a Bond martini. It has us shaken, but not stirred. Poetic. Poetic, eh? And wrong. Very nice. Very nice. <laughs> Very nice, Jean. Well, it's not. Climate change is not like a Bond movie, but the only way certain leaders can imagine actually doing anything about it is if they fantasize that they have good hair, are sexy, and they can save the world while wearing a tuxedo with a martini in one hand and a beautiful woman on the other. That's it. It's not like a Bond movie at all. But if that makes Boris Johnson happy and he'll actually do something, fine, I'll take it. Here is what Boris Johnson said. James Bond. Generally comes to the climax of his highly lucrative film strapped to a doomsday device while a red digital clock ticks down remorselessly to a detonation that will end human life as we know it. I think that Boris thinks that he's James Bond. Exactly. My favorite thing about that is that, like, he wrote that down <laughs> and delivered it at the International <laughs> Climate he Conference. He thought it was good. Like, he wrote that down and it wasn't, oh, that's stupid. He went, oh, circle that idea. Boris, you've done it again, you sweet genius. <laughs> uh, Boris went on to say this. We are in roughly the same position, my fellow global leaders, as James Bond today. No, James Bond's position is missionary. <laughs> <laughs> He's not creative. I mean, if we roll with Boris Johnson's metaphor for a minute, if the climate crisis actually were a James Bond movie, what would you call it? Dr. No Ozone Layer. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Quantum of 1.5 degrees Celsius. <laughs> Diamonds are forever. Too bad we're not. <laughs> but also accepted, tomorrow never dies, but polar bears do. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> One of the main headlines of the week was that leaders of more than 90 countries signed the Global Methane Pledge. I know you've all been following this very closely. <laughs> so please recite the Global Methane Pledge. Anthropogenic methane emission is putting our climate out of commission. So we solemnly swear, hands over hearts, to reduce by the third all our burping and farts. <laughs> Oh, that's good. The methane pledge, not a limerick. Uh, uh, it wasn't. But that well, it's was not very, a limerick, oh, but, it, but they, I, they had to have a little rhyme in there. It was very good. Uh, because it helps people, of course, mm. to Just, remember it and take it seriously. It's got that lilt to it. Shakespeare discovered that, of course. Mm. Put a little rhyme into things and a little beat to it, and people don't forget. Uh, Gene, mm. your methane pledge? Oh, the COP26 one is they're going to cut methane emissions by 75% by 2030. You're close, 30%. 30%. But, but there's, no, there's no enforcement mechanism, right? They're just basically promising, like a pinky promise or something? Kind of. It's voluntary. This is a recurring theme, though, with the COP meetings, yeah. basically, is big promises and nothing happens. Some media outlets are saying this methane pledge could be the real legacy of this particular climate conference. Why is the methane thing such a game changer? Because evidently we have an improved environment quicker. Once you get rid of methane, then you do of carbon. 
Carbon takes 100,000 million years. I've researched that, and so it takes 100,000 million years to improve anything. Methane, it's done like in two weeks. That's something like that. Anyway. Something like that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, does anyone know why it's more important to address the methane first? Alice? Yeah, I mean, everyone's giving a smart answer, and I wrote down, because farts are bad. So I don't know <laughs> if, I'm, if this is a useful... I think that I'm, works I don't feel like well. I'm contributing. Here's the real answer. Eric will get a half point on that. Uh, methane causes 80 times as much warming as the same amount of carbon dioxide. Oh. Time Magazine put it this way. Think of methane as a cashmere sweater for the planet. Well, carbon dioxide... It's more of a polyester blouse. <laughs> methane is a great drag name for you. Methane. <laughs> methane? Oh, methane's getting methy. Yeah, that's a methane pledge. Here comes <laughs> methane pledge. I like it. A promise is a promise. <laughs> Check out the entire episode of Because News by subscribing on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts.